The last three weeks we've been talking about at the cross and who remembers the symbols we've already gotten to. Anybody out there? We got the rope, the feather. I wasn't here for that week. That was a good week. And the, the sign, right? There's a sign that Pastor Perry did last week. So now we're going to go on to the spear. And I like what Pastor Perry did last week in showing some spears to kind of get us started. So I pulled out some spears for us. You guys know that spear very well. That, I think, is a great spear, don't you? There is the one that I found. This angel has a spear. And that guy doesn't look like he's going to do much with his spear. And there's Britney Spears. And here's Broccoli Spears. And there's a cactus with spear thistles. And King Triton, the spear. If you're the spear, if you're a Florida State fan, that guy, we don't fear him, right? And then some of you might already have like a love interest that the Cupid guy got you. This guy doesn't want that. Oh, spear nose bat. And there's Aaron Spears, a big drummer, great drummer. Anybody know this guy? Spock. And the end of the Spears, a movie about missionaries that go in, preach the gospel, but give their life on for the gospel. So this is the spear we're going to talk about tonight. It's the spear of destiny. It's a spear that pierced Jesus. And they think this is the actual one, but it may not be. I need your help with some of the... W words that we're going to do tonight. The first W word is woe. Can you give me a woe after I say three, one, two, woe. Okay, so this isn't woe in a horse. This is woe, something's really gross here. Hey, I don't really want to deal with this. That's what kind of woe we're looking for. So once again, I'll say one, two, three, woe, yeah. When you look at this word for tonight, it's one about looking at Jesus hanging on a cross, and there's blood. He just dies. You know, this is a mature audience-only part of the cross. I guess some of you probably go to the video store, to the movie store, and you say, hey, Mom, can I get this video? It has a, you know, PG-13 rating or has a MA rating per video. And she goes, uh, no, we can't show you that stuff. But they bring you to church, right? And here's Jesus on the cross. He's having the spear pierce him. As the Bible says, he's died and now the one soldier takes the sword and pierces him in the side. And all we can say to that is that W word. Let's say it again. Whoa. Tonight we want to get by the, the bloodiness of that spear to the wow the wonderful edge of that spear. Tonight we want to get past the, I feel guilty because Jesus died on the cross for my sins to the, wow, it's so beautiful that my sins are forgiven. We got to make that trip from the woe to the wow. Well, we're going to go there, but just let's stop and see another W word that is described in the Bible when the spear is used. And I think many of the adults here have, have experienced this. It's the spear of why. It's that question that we ask in our lives when all of a sudden the spear isn't pointed on somebody else, but it's pointed on us. And it's painful. And it brings suffering. And it brings questions. It's the spear of why that all of a sudden we start even questioning our relationship with God. So let's work on that, the why, you know, together. Saying together what, what that why would sound like when people are, have questions, when, when they're in anguish, when they're in pain. Let's say that together. One, two, three. Why? why? Yeah. Does that sound like anguish or you just, you know, whatever? It's, I'm hurting. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to, to have happen next. Say it again. One, two, three. Why? 
It's a deep within your heart question. In the Bible, it talks about that why question. The Old Testament people had been rebelling against God. They've been worshiping false gods. In other words, you know, here's God. He's so great, but they decided, eh, we really don't like that God. Let's, let's follow somebody else. Let's believe in something else. And so God says, yeah, I don't have to put up with that. Even though I've been protecting you from your enemies, now I'm going to point the spear of pain back on you. Sometimes the spear of why comes because we live in a broken world. Sometimes the spear of why comes because someone does something bad to us. But the Bible says that we also have that spear of discipline and of consequences when we chose to rebel against God. There's a couple of scripture verses that talk about that spear coming against God's people. The first one is in Jeremiah 6. It says, Look, a great army coming from the north, a great nation rising against you from far off lands. They are armed with bows and spears. They are cruel and show no mercy. They are coming in battle formation, planning to destroy you, beautiful Jerusalem. Here these people rebelled against God. They didn't believe that he was the true God. And God basically says, you're going to have to experience the pain of me withholding my blessings from you. There's another scripture in Isaiah chapter 63. It says, they, God's people, rebelled against him and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he, God, became their enemy and fought against him. When bad things happen to good people, it's not a great situation. I've got a movie clip here tonight, probably very recognizable to a lot of you. It's that, that scene where Darth Vader and Obi-Wan Kenobi meet up. And there's that good hero, Obi-Wan Kenobi, dying on behalf of allowing Luke to have, you know, freedom. Let's look at that. When good things happen to... When bad things happen to good people. There's always a weak old man. You can't win, Doc. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. You should not have come back. What does uh, Luke Skywalker say there at the end? No! No! Don't let that happen to Obi-Wan. Later on in the ship he says, why? Why did Obi-Wan die? You know, maybe tonight you're asking some why questions. You know, why did that best friend of mine move away? I'm never going to see them again. Why are my parents, you know, fighting so much? Why did grandma and grandpa, you know, why did grandma die? Why did dad, mom lose their job? All these why questions come right within us and we really just feel the pain of those, that bad things happen to good people. We feel that spear so real in our life. I want to share with you a story that happened to our family 
And I want to share the end of the story first because our oldest son, who had a car accident, is actually doing great today. He's fully recovered. He has a great, you know, relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He's gone back to college and he's becoming a nurse, something a totally different career change than he had before. But it started out October 2009 where we got a phone call that early morning, a phone call that, you know, no parent wants to get. It was calling up, telling us that Andrew had been in a serious car accident by himself and broke ribs, fractured his, one of his vertebrae and had a traumatic brain injury and now was in intensive care at a trauma hospital in Atlanta. We got on a plane thanks to some friends getting that all organized and got down to Atlanta and found our son there, unable to talk, in an induced coma, just to keep him alive. And those days were 30 of them that Andrew was in a coma, not wondering whether he was going to stay alive, you know, wondering if he was ever going to come out of the coma, wondering if he would have any kind of ability because of his brain injury to walk, to talk, to remember us. Those 30 days were days of asking a lot of why questions. In fact, I remember getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning. One morning we were writing on this website called Caring Bridge and keeping people up to date with what was going on and, and sharing our heart with them. And I remember 2 o'clock in the morning just kind of pouring out my heart and saying, God, you know, why did you let this happen? You know, why, how, why is Andrew in a coma and why, why is it going on so long? You know, why are you making our family go through all this? That sphere of why was so real. I mean, if that's a question that you have tonight, this word of God has something to give you to, to awaken you out of that why. If that's something you experienced 10 years ago or 20 years ago or a year ago, this Word of God has something to give you so that you can move from the confusion of the why to the comfort of the wow. Or if that's something that, you know, maybe even tomorrow or next year or 10 years from now, you could find yourself in a situation where that is just so painful and your relationship with God is in question. And this scripture tonight has a way from bringing you to that confusion into the wow of the cross. Would you allow the Holy Spirit tonight to, to move that spear of woe to a spear of wow? Will you allow the Holy Spirit to help you listen and help you believe? So that you can move from your whys to that beautiful woe. Close your eyes for a moment. I know it's dangerous during a sermon to let people close their eyes. I don't do it very often. But imagine, if you will, closing your eyes... It's important to move you to that place, to imagine, to with your eyes closed. The one soldier taking his spear to the side of Jesus and plunging his spear into his side. Make it personal. Since it was your sin and my sin and the sin of the entire world that made that pierce into Jesus, make it personal. Because it was the little sins and the big sins. It was the plan of the Father in heaven to put Jesus in that moment. Make it personal. Jesus had to die. Only the Son of God could be the perfect sacrifice. Make it personal. Only the Son of God could pay the price. Now open your eyes and imagine the water and the blood flowing out of Jesus as your release 
as your freedom from, as your change agent. Make the woe become a beautiful wow. Jesus did this for me. He not only had to die, but he was glad to die to save me. He not only had to die, but he was glad to die to clear up my questions. He was not only glad to die, he, he as the Bible says, for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame. So there's Jesus paying for your sin and my sin. Like the waters of baptism flowing down from us and telling us before God that we are dearly loved sons and daughters of the Heavenly Father, washing us of all of our sin and making it so that Jesus Christ lives within us. Like the flowing blood and body of Christ that we come up for in communion, reviving us, renewing us, reclaiming us as God's people. Make it personal. Let Jesus come and speak to you tonight as he did to Thomas. Thomas. Put in your name. Put your finger here and see my hands. Read, reach out your hand and put it right into my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Put your finger here and allow your whys to be filled with, wow. That's a W word we haven't done yet, right? Can you help me with that word as well? One, two, three. Wow. Can you believe it? Jesus died so that I could have closeness with the Heavenly Father. Can you say it again? Wow. Jesus died so that I could have the Holy Spirit living in me. Can you say it one more time? Wow. Jesus died so that I could be in heaven forever. One last Bible verse. In Revelation chapter 1, it says, Behold, Jesus is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. Even so. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Amen.